inch radius on the end of the blade, this isn't like a traditional plane iron, but it's still relatively easy to work with. If you do get a, a heavy nick or damage in the edge, you can, you can dress it out on a high speed grinder or a low speed grinder. Just be very, very careful that you don't burn the blade. It's, it's relatively easy to do that as well. Um, if you want to ensure that you're not going to overheat the blade and take the temper out, you can do it by hand. Set the blade into a jig or into a, the vise and using a coarse diamond stone, you can follow the angle that's on the blade. Dress that edge until you've worked down past the, any uh, nick or damage. You can also use a block of wood like this, a flat block with uh, sandpaper. We actually have grits in this adhesive back paper that range from 80 to 400 grit. We do 80, 180, 220, and 400 grit. It's nice because it just sticks right down. Another trick you can do to make this a little easier is to take the plane blade in the tool and run a trough in the block that you're going to work. Then you're matching the radius exactly. If not, if you have a flat block like this, again, just follow the angle and dress it down to where you need it. When the blade's been all cleaned up, take off any burr that might be on there. And then working on a 1000 grit stone, I can do this freehand by finding the registration point for the bevel and lifting up just a little bit and lock your arms into your sides and working side to side across the stone also move your body front to back. Go up and back and create a series of X's and usually up and back is enough to get a burr on the back of the blade. Once you have that burr Clean it off on the 8,000 grit stone and repeat the same process. Just bind the bevel, come up a little bit, and rock side to side. One of the things about the, this blade is because of the radius on there and the fact that it's a roughing tool, you don't have to get a perfect match to the angle. If the angle isn't exact or the radius isn't exact, that's okay. So sharpening freehand is actually not as, as much of a problem as you might think. Uh, dress out the, any burr that might still be there and you've got a blade ready to use. If you still feel like you really just can't do it freehand, we've found that the blade actually fits in, in our side clamping honing guide. Because of the very narrow wheel on here, you're able to rock the blade and follow the angle. So I'd switch back to the 1000 grit stone. Just clean that up a little bit. And I'm going to set this for a 30 degree angle off of a 30 degree stop, preset stop. Tighten the blade down. And now working off the opposite, opposite end of the stone than I just did, I get a corner registered and draw that back. Switch to the other corner. Again, I'm leaving a, a big X on the stone so you can see where it's wearing. As soon as you can feel a burr on the back of the blade, you're done. You switch over to the 8000 grit stone. Again, remove that burr. You want to wipe off the wheel so you don't transfer grit from one stone to the next. And start in the corner, draw back. Because the wheel of the jig is referencing off the stone, it's giving you consistency as you work back. As soon as you can see a bright polish along the edge, you're ready to go. 
knock off the burr on the 8,000 grit stone. And then it's a really good idea to wipe down the blade with camellia oil or jojoba oil before you go to use it. That'll keep rust from happening. You can also wipe down the tool at the end of the day before you're finished or when you're finished working with it before you put it away. And with a nice fresh, fresh edge, we'll put that back into the plane. Set my depth. And you can watch the chips fly. Thank <laughs> you.